Listen, I've been very exhausted these past few days. From animation work for to drawing Interstellar Ranger Commence, to drawing ludes of Interstellar Ranger Commence, I've been absolutely physically and mentally drained. So, guess what I did? I put on a movie. That's right, Civil War. You expected Homecoming? Nah. When you can do the things that I can, but you don't, and then the bad things happen, they happen because of you. Yeah, Captain America Civil War. Captain America Civil War introduced an interpretation of Spider-Man that I quite liked. He was young, he was invested, he should have been Team Cap, but I liked that he didn't care that he was beating up a friggin' Avenger. Kids got balls. It gave me flashbacks to the spectacular Spider-Man, a show that you all know I love. And then we got to Spider-Man Homecoming, and wowee, holy sh I really like this movie. Do I love it more than Spider-Man 2? Yes? No? Uh... I have a weird relationship with Spider-Man Homecoming. At a time, I loved it more than Spider-Man 2, and then I actually re-watched Spider-Man 2 and realized I was out of my mind. But, but, that doesn't mean Homecoming is a bad movie, or a movie that doesn't capture the spirit of Spider-Man. That movie's far from home. Spider-Man Homecoming is, in all honesty, one of my favorite MCU films, and a genuinely amazing Spider-Man film, and I'm so excited to talk about this movie yet again. But before we get started, I want to thank today's sponsor, Private Internet Access. Private Internet Access is the world's most transparent and customizable VPN provider. With over 30 million downloads, 10 years of VPN expertise, and 100% open source software, they never record or store user data, unlike your internet service provider. Yeah, you know your internet service provider can track and log your info, but that can't happen if you have a VPN. With private internet access on your Windows, Mac, Android, Linux, iOS, and many more, you can hide your online activity from your internet service provider, network administrator, and government sensors. The VPN software also blocks ads, trackers, and malicious websites. Also, if you want to access a show that's available in, say, Australia and not available to you, just change your virtual location to that country's location and you'll be able to access that sweet, sweet content. Signing up for private internet access is risk-free, too. There's a 30-day money-back guarantee, plus their highly skilled customer support team is available 24-7. Just go to privateinternetaccess.com slash browntable for a three-year subscription with four extra free months, 83% off. Check it out, it's extremely helpful in this increasingly digital age. Thanks so much, Private Internet Access, for sponsoring, and let's get on with the video. Okay, so I think this all came down to the mental gymnastics I had to make when figuring out which movie I loved better, Spider-Man 2 or Spider-Man Homecoming. And I think this is when I realized that, yeah, they're completely different movies. Spider-Man 2 is cinema. It's a once-in-a-while superhero movie. The movie's just brilliant in every way. And to me, Homecoming doesn't reach it, but it does do things differently from Spider-Man 2, and I think it executes those concepts well. I don't think a Spider-Man movie needs to be Spider-Man 2 to be good. I think if you get the core fundamentals right, then you're okay. That's why I love Spider-Man 1, the amazing Spider-Man, the ridiculously weird Spider-Man Unlimited. Because at the end of the day, what makes Spider-Man Spider-Man is his willingness to overcome obstacles that most people would give up on because of his sense of responsibility. And I think this movie pulls this concept off well. In an interesting spin due to a post-MCU world, as you know, Spider-Man now believes the true embodiment of being a hero, of being responsible, equates to being an Avenger. He wants to be a f***ing Avenger so bad and protects his neighborhood as much as he can to prove to both himself and to Happy Hogan, his main connection to Iron Man and the Avengers, that he's cut out to be one. And I quite like the way the movie handles this. The main thing I love about Spider-Man Homecoming is that it's a story about Peter Parker. Get your trunks on. Come on. This isn't Peter Parker and his web of connections and how they affect him. The story is more so how Peter affects the world around him and how he pushes through all these obstacles to obtain a personal victory. And he kind of gets one, but at a cost. And again, this goes back to the Spider-Man 2 argument I made earlier. The movie's not trying to be Spider-Man 2. And Spider-Man 2 isn't the only way to make a Spider-Man film. Amy Pascal has recently been talking about how Spider-Man got into the MCU and how Kevin Feige was pitching this new Spider-Man. And one of the things stated was putting Spider-Man against a world where everybody had everything and he had nothing. And that's kind of what Spider-Man has always been, right? A dude who grew up broke had to figure things out for himself an outcast. The way Spider-Man Homecoming wrestles with a universe full of superheroes is making it clear that Peter is out of his element. Every time he encounters something new and exciting, something extravagant, the dude freaks out. He's like, oh, that's awesome, you know, because this is all new to him. 
But just because he experiences all these crazy things doesn't mean his life is great. Sure, in the movie Peter doesn't lose his relationships, he doesn't absolutely cripple his friendship with Ned, or make Liz hate him, but what he does lose is his chance of having a normal life. He constantly loses opportunities to be happy, to have fun, or to be what most teenage superheroes would probably end up becoming, show-offs. So where's your pal Spider-Man? Hey, what's up? I'm Spider-Man. What am I doing? Hey, Puny Parker! <laughs> oh. Secret identities reek. No. It's Peter Parker wrestling with, I can do these things, but should I? And that makes me enjoy the film for what it is. And so we know who Peter is. He's a dude that cares about the people around him, but he wants more. He's had a taste of it. The suit, the extravagance, Iron Man is the greatest superhero ever, and he believes he can maximize his potential if he becomes like Iron Man's protege, if he becomes an Avenger. Ned freaks out because he thinks Peter's an Avenger, and Peter agrees. Are you an Avenger? Yeah, basically. Heck, even in his personal life, he ties himself to Tony Stark. I can't go to Washington because if Mr. Stark needs me, then I have to make sure that I'm here. And this brings in the Iron Boy Jr. argument. Sure, it's a meme, but it's the actual plot of Spider-Man Homecoming. And that's okay. Listen, that's okay. Because the whole point of the movie is that Peter outgrows this toxic behavior. Oh, we have a Spanish quiz. Ned, I'm probably never gonna come back here. I am so far beyond high school right now. Please, this is all I have. I'm nothing without this suit. I just want him to be like you. Peter thinks he has no value if he loses his connection to the Avengers, to Iron Man. He believes that being a small-time superhero defending his city isn't enough. Because based off what he sees other superheroes doing, what he does is nothing. And this changes when, oh no, the Vulture, what Peter considers to be a large-scale villain, when he thinks the Avengers should take care of, is Liz Allen's dad. The father of the girl he has a crush on, and this is all happening in his neighborhood. And from here on, it's a shift. Maybe Tony's right. Maybe this isn't the Avengers' responsibility. The Avengers? No, no, no. Just a little below their pay grade. And you don't have to be an Avenger to be a hero. Simply doing the right thing is what makes you a hero. One of the most iconic moments of not only this movie, but all Spider-Man in film, is when Peter realizes the Vulture is Liz's dad. And he's just absolutely uncomfortable the entire time, and Tom Holland is such an excellent actor, but the highlight for me is that even when Adrian Toomes threatens Peter, Peter leaves his phone behind in Toomes' car to track him later. So when he heads into the homecoming party and says goodbye to Liz... I'm, I'm sorry. You don't deserve this. Yeah, he didn't make up his mind here or when he entered the party. No. He made up his mind ten minutes ago. Sussy baka. The movie may not have Peter really struggling to balance his Spider-Man side and his Peter Parker side too much, but what it does have is Peter learning what being a superhero entails. Like in previous movies, Spider-Man is the only superhero, so he himself can define what being a superhero is. In the MCU, other superheroes already exist, and so Peter may have assumptions as to what that all means, and he has to recognize for himself that he can't just be one of the superheroes he admires, he has to be a own hero and, you know, learn things on his own. I think it's really neat to have a scene where Peter has to naturally get used to heights and struggle to use a suit that he didn't make. By the way, the Washington Monument scene is a fantastic set piece. I adore it so much. The music is absolutely incredible. Michael Giacchino, more like Michael Giacchino. <laughs> Sorry. And so, one Audi product placement later, Peter finds the vulture and... Under the rubble, Peter calls out. He's scared. He's a kid. He wants to be saved by the heroes he looks up to. But there's no Iron Man. He's all alone. And at this point, he realizes that he has to become the hero he envisions himself to be all on his own. Sure, he calls himself Spider-Man, but is he really Spider-Man? Crime-fighting spider. You're Spider-Boy? Spider-Man. Not in that onesie or not. The movie seems to be making the argument that Peter fully sees himself a hero when he has the Stark suit. And this is the moment where Peter recognizes that what makes the hero isn't the suit, it's the man. Spider-Man. Come on, Spider-Man!
But before one of the greatest moments of the movie, possibly the best moment, Peter has a conversation with Adrian Toomes, and it's absolutely phenomenal. What makes Adrian Toomes a memorable villain is that he's a victim. A human being like the rest of us trying to find a way to survive and provide for his family. Someone that turned to a life of crime after being stepped on by those with more power than him for so long. Those people, Pete, those people up there, the rich and the powerful, they do whatever they want. He tells Peter that they're the little guys, and the big superheroes don't care about people like him, people like Peter. Guys like us? Like you and me? They don't care about us. But Peter Parker, Spider-Man, is a different kind of superhero. He doesn't blow up his enemies, he doesn't want to kill anyone. Activating instant kill. No, 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 I don't want to kill anybody. Peter cares. Peter saves Toomes' life and in doing so, grows as a hero. Tony Stark later on praises him and invites him to join the Avengers, even flexing a new suit on him. And this is what Peter has wanted. The entire movie. But I'm, I'm good. You're good? Good. How are you good? Because Toomes is right. Because there have to be people out there that handle the smaller stuff, the more personal stuff. There have to be friendly neighborhood heroes that are exactly that. Friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Somebody's gotta look out for the little guy, right? Last chance, yes or no? No. Peter decides that his fate won't be controlled by those more powerful than him. He's gonna make his own decisions and become his own hero. He's not gonna be Iron Boy Jr. That is, until Disney decided they wanted to have their cake and eat it too, when they essentially wrote Spider-Man into an Avenger in Infinity War, and then in Spider-Man Far From Home, Peter literally fights Tony's war for him, but you know, I've already talked about that before. But still, right after Civil War, Spider-Man Homecoming, a banger. Hopefully this video reminds everyone that I, Mauricio, do in fact like an MCU Spider-Man movie, and I honestly quite like his portrayal overall. It's only one movie I dislike. So let me know what Spider-Man movie is your favorite in the comments below, and of course, don't forget to check out Interstellar Ranger Commence, an anime animated series that I'm creating for the channel, link in the description, and remember to follow the series on social media, at IRC underscore anime. And by the way, if this video bothered you in any way, relax man, go get some ice cream. Vibe, we out here talking about movies, and hopefully the movies we're gonna watch are better than the ones we have. Thanks so much, patrons, for all your support. You really do help keep the channel going. You guys are the chattiest chads of all time. And if you don't know why I just said chad, well, the chad nation is what I call the fan base, the subscribers, the community of this channel. And if you want to join the chad nation and become a chad, all you have to do is subscribe and turn on notifications. Now go check out some other videos. We got a couple reacts with Jacob and Nat. We got Uncommentary. My latest one was on Batman Ninja. We have fully animated videos too, and we have video essays that have animation in integrated into them, the latest one being the Venom video. Go check all the content out. Thank you so much for coming to the table, and I'll see you all next time.